And today we have Chaplain Tania Dow, filmmaker. My goodness, you've accomplished a lot. This is amazing. This is what's fun. God is okay. so good. <laughs> all the time. All Amen. the time. He's, it's Black History Month you put down on the bio. I don't think I would have forgotten that. <laughs> actually, I don't think I would have. Uh, and then we had, actually, that started in 1915, uh, Black History Month, but it became where we could really register it on the calendar. It's in 1926, October in Europe, February here in America. Is there anything you haven't done here? I, I'd like to ask that. Uh, <laughs> we have senior chaplain. She's retired now, but wait. Can you hear her? Can she hear you? Is this good? Okay. What did he say? Stephen you. wants to know something. He, he know. just wants to make sure you can hear me and I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. We're absolutely fine. She uh, said, thanks for taking care of us. <laughs> She's an army veteran, which I got to see pictures on Facebook before they barred me. They have banned me now. No. Um, yeah, they have. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, and then you're the author of Why Shall I Care, title of the book. Is that right? Well, Why Should I Care actually is a film. Oh, it's a film. Well, we'll yes. get into all the films because <laughs> you have one coming out Saturday. Yes. So, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. Yes. Let me, let me explain to them who I'm talking to, okay? <laughs> I'm talking to a United States Army veteran, a former Las Vegas police uh, officer. I don't remember your position, but we'll get there. Uh, an ordained minister, of course, like myself, and chaplain. We we met through that time. Yes. Uh, and, and show business, both. And uh, she's got international speaker. And that's what happened. Are you there? I'm still here. I can hear you. Okay. I think we're okay now. Okay. Uh, nobody touches anything. You know, Steven's moving around a bit, but I still think we're okay. <laughs> okay. Where would you like to start? Because I can start anywhere. I mean, I mean, just, you know, I know you love show business. I know that. I know you love the Lord. I know that. Yes. Um, Spoke to the international speaker to start with, okay? Yes. We'll end up in film, no doubt, and always with the Father. We'll end up always with the Lord. Amen, um, yes. <laughs> when you were the international speaker, they were letting you into Bangladesh? What year was that? Uh, Bangladesh? That was, yeah. oh, of course you asked me that. I want to say it was maybe 2009, I'm trying to remember. It was really? when I was still on the police department. I was speaking in, in Bangladesh. I spoke in Abu Dhabi. I spoke yeah. twice in Curacao, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, London, at least five times in London. I'm trying to remember where I haven't spoken. I've spoken in Toronto, okay. uh, Saskatoon. Uh, and what did you, you speak about? Well, I, I actually was the invocation and motivation for uh, police conferences everywhere I went. So there were international police conferences. I opened the conferences, the prayer and the invocations, a word of encouragement. So I got to take encouragement and prayer around the world. Well, then let's pray right now. Would you please lead it for the My honor. segment? Okay. Yes, indeed. Lord God, I just say thank you. I thank you so much. I thank you for this amazing woman who is on the other side of this uh, uh, film uh, process, this podcast, this, this universe that we're in right now. God, which I thank you for even this opportunity to be in this virtual universe and to reach out to people and to call in the love of your just the love of you, Lord God, that we would know that you love us and that you care for us and that you want that no one would be lost. You want everyone to know that you are there for them, just waiting for them just to reach out, just to say the word, just to call upon the name of Jesus Christ and to know that they will be saved, Lord, when they cho choose Jesus Christ as their savior. So Father God, I just pray that prayer for everyone listening. If they don't know the Lord, Father, I ask that their hearts be touched right now, that the Holy Spirit will minister to them, Lord God. Father God, I pray that they are encouraged by our interaction and conversation, Lord God, and with a desire to have a personal relationship with you, Lord God. This is not a religion. It is a relationship. And hey, so, Father, yes. So, Father, I pray that people will be inspired and just 
reach out. Just, you can say it where you are right now, Lord God, you know, I believe, you know, I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is my savior. I know that I'm a sinner. I ask that you forgive me for my sins. And I ask that I would be able to be in the kingdom with you and following Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. And then you just end it with amen. Anything to that effect, God hears you. He hears your heart. You don't have to know all the words. You just call out to him and say, please let me be one of your children. I I love your son. And and I want to walk with you from this day forward. So I pray, Father God, people are touched by that, inspired by that. Choose to walk that path, Lord God, and join my sister Susan and I as your children and in and and to have eternal life. And ask all these things in Jesus' name. Bless our bless our time together. Make it make it bountiful in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, now. If you did say what Chapman Dow just repeated about our Lord Jesus Christ, if you just said that and you don't know how to reach us, what's our email here, Tammy? We just opened up on it. What's our email? Out of the box. It's Dr. Susan. Dr. Susan. Out of the box. Out of the box. At yahoo.com. At yahoo.com. We just opened it recently. So that's why I wanted to repeat it. And if you want to talk to Chaplain Dow, say so. Just say so. Okay? Yep. Chaplain to me at gmail.com. Chaplain to me at gmail.com. You, you do uh, a lot. I don't, I, I'm going to jump a little bit here. So I, I had you do, <laughs> you do a lot. You had international speaker uh, and the places that you spoke and why you spoke. But I, a lot of it, I, I came, uh, uh, I seem to think the human trafficking and domestic violence, was that one of the things you talked about? Yes. And that's interesting that you would just say that because that was what I was out doing this morning. <laughs> I was out boots on the ground looking for our missing and exploited children here um, in the Las Vegas Valley. We do every single year an outreach that's called the Big Search. And you can join it after I explain to you what it's about at thebigsearch.vegas, thebigsearch.vegas. We go out in groups of three to four people. They are given individual cards of these young, let me see, let me get if you can see it. So these are currently missing children. I know you can't read it so much. I would encourage you if you're on Facebook to go to Nevada Child Seekers page, Nevada Child Seekers Seekers. page on Facebook, Child Seekers. Seekers, S-E-E-K-E-R-S, and you will see these pictures here, and you can share them on your social media to make people aware of the fact that they're missing. And I already want to give you a praise report. We've already located 10 of the 30. So every year we go out looking for 30, and we usually fare pretty well. We get 26 to 27, and now we're already one, like one shift into it, not a whole day, one shift into this. And we've already located 10 kids. So yes, praise God. So thankful. And all we really need you guys to do is go look at the page and, and share it on your page to let people know that we're looking for these missing children and they can contact 311. If you do locate it, you believe you found a child that looks similar to what you saw in the, in the profiles on the page, Call 311. Do not try to intercept yourself, okay? We, we want you to be safe. Let the and police do what the police do, okay? <laughs> yeah, let the people that have the skills use them. Exactly. Uh, but notice she said 311. She did not say 911. 311, okay? Yes, yes, right. it's very important. <laughs> so, well, you're, you're out there and you're doing things all the time, all the time, <laughs> uh, which I, I like quite a bit. Uh, I don't know exactly. I, I, I could spend the whole time talking about the chaplain's program. It's yes. a sensational chaplain program, chaplain's program that we've had. And I've been blessed to have a couple of wonderful disciples on, like uh, Senior Barry and, oh, just, I won't start Mike, Chaplain Michael, and we have him in prayer. Yes. Uh, but I mean, uh, and having the chaplain's program here, and I was a chaplain already, but it didn't count here. And I had my doctrine already, but it didn't count here. You have to go through the program. Yes. And it's and it's just lovely, isn't it? 
Yes, it is. All yeah, right. she's talking about Chaplaincy Nevada. And if you're interested in becoming a chaplain, an ordained minister, being trained on how to go out and be the boots on the ground and minister in the community, you go to chaplaincynevada.org, chaplaincynevada.org, and spell out Nevada. I mean, that's something a lot of you, when you have time on your hands, you want to do good for people, you don't know how, you're afraid if you do this, it'll be wrong. They'll teach you. And yes. on the way, you get loved. On the way, you get loved. Yes, huh? you do. Not a bad program at all. Um, yeah. Let me ask you, how did you, I mean, I have it in front of me, but I, <laughs> I mean, uh, Turn Back Time, many short films, Turn Back Time 2018, was that your first Actually, so that's a that's a very interesting story, and it and it got sparked off of the fact, and you'll understand this, uh, Susan, because we've spoke about this actually. The fact that there were so few female filmmakers, actually female directors, you know, screenwriters, people who were putting together films and producing films for whatever reason, and there became that. Uh, what is it? Was it Time's Up and Me Too movement happened? Oh, yeah. Where, right? Remember that? So yeah. it was right in that time frame. And the Lord was already speaking to my heart because my sister and I, when we were younger, before we moved to Vegas, we did plays. My sister and I did plays just because, you know, my mom knew we were talented and she would take us and we were part of plays. But then I went into police work and police work is not necessarily conducive when you're going through it to all these little extracurricular things that I get to be, you know, to do now now that I'm retired. So I already had skills with screenwriting and you know that I am a writer and an author and all of that. So this project called the 48 hour film project came out in 2018. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. So that is how I actually got started. I initially signed up for the film project to be an actor. I was just going to, oh, you know, it'll be fun. I'll be an actor. And Joe Lujan at the time, it was Joe, Hula, Joe Lujan and Corey Taylor who were actually the facilitators for the program. And they just kind of watched me buzzing around and talking to the actors and taking notes. And they're just like, this, this, what is this woman doing? You know? <laughs> So finally, they said to me, Tamia, did you ever think about being a team leader? You know, you're out here getting, you know, gathering information and, and interviewing the actors and doing all this kind of stuff. Why don't you just lead your own team? Right. And, and you said, well, yeah, no. <laughs> I think, I think actually so. I just kind of needed someone to spark me like that, you know? So I told him, I says, well, let me pray about it. Right. And he told me, well, you know, the deadline is May 14th of that year. So it's May 14th, 2018. Well, May 14th is my birthday. So as soon as he said May 14th, I was like, ah, oh, this is destined to be. <laughs> and I signed up. The rest is history. We made 11 movies since then. <laughs> 11. 11. 1, 1, 11. Yes. Well, you know, uh, I, I've not seen one of them because uh, I can't keep up with you. So I just have to see that in front. I can't keep up with myself. And it's and we're in COVID lockdown. Yeah. Um, it seems like it gives you more time to find out how comfortable you are in your own soul. Well, I just want to I just want to celebrate you and I want to thank you because I want to tell you guys, this is so amazing. So so Chaplain Susan and I saw each other within the chaplaincy program. I didn't really know her that well, didn't know much about her. I knew she was Dr. Susan. I knew that, but really didn't know that who she is. I mean, like <laughs> the amazing woman that she is. So I was at the Action on Film Film Festival and I'm sitting in the hallway. This is so funny. I was sitting in the hallway waiting for a movie to start and Susan was actually on a panel, like a special panel inside of one of the uh, theaters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember? And she came out and she saw me sitting on the bench and she was like, why are you sitting on the bench? Why are you not inside this um, symposium or whatever it was? Right. And I said, oh, it wasn't part of my ticket. <laughs> Susan handed me her purse. She said, I'm running to the bathroom. She said, girl, you're coming in. You're sitting right next to me. And I tell you what, I have spiritually been sitting right next to her ever since. <laughs> it's a sweet story. You see how good God is, though. Yes. You see how good the Lord is. He's good all the time. Yes. He's good all the time. And all the time. He's so gracious to us. He's been so gracious to us. Really, I'm, I, uh, it takes a while when you move to Vegas. To start, because I mean, how many restaurants can you go to? How many people on the strip can you know? I mean, you know, I was so used to everywhere I went, knowing everybody. And if I didn't, I was going to make sure I did. Right. But it's a different world now. And it's a different Vegas. This is a different California, New York. I mean, 
We're going through changes. And frankly, there's not a change that our Lord can't handle. Come on. Yes. And he's prepared us to properly handle it too. Yeah. I mean, you know, as we go through this, we just keep on keeping on because we know he's right. Always in control. Yes. Right here. And so it makes it easier. And I feel, you know, I feel, why have my glasses on? I guess I feel more intelligent or something. I don't know. Uh, but I just, uh, I just feel so much better for people who have died through COVID, and I know mm. who they are, mm-hmm. and those that haven't um, looked to see what's bigger in yeah. Earth and where they're going. I'm always amazed you get on a plane, expect the pilot to get you there. I'm always <laughs> amazed when you, you know, it's like, huh, really? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, but that's just because we're blessed. Right. And that's why I like your witnessing, because you do a lot of it. Uh, now, okay, so the, that was the first film, Turn Back Time. Turn right? Back Time, yes. Mm-hmm. And we won an award for it. We won the Social Awareness Award for the for the uh, festival, for the project. And oh, yeah. let me tell you what's cool about that is so what, what? I tell you what, I learned so much from the 48 hour and I'll tell you why. The 48 hour showed a young filmmaker who was a new, basically newborn filmmaker, all of the steps that you needed to put in place to get a film completed. And we had to do it in 48 hours. We had to get our crew. We had to get our actors. We had to write a script. We had to scout our locations. We had to film the film. We had to edit the film and we had to turn in the film and it was supposed to be between four and seven minutes. And you had 48 hours, Friday night to Sunday night to complete a film to be submitted for a competition. Whoa. And yes. <laughs> of course you did, but now just a question. Wasn't there a 48? Yeah. Congrats. Or as a good Jew would say, Mazel tov. Uh, but wasn't there a television show on 48 hours? There was, was a, te- a movie. that was a television show. They have it on. That's about homicide investigations generally. Right. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised you haven't done one of those. I know it's a, yeah. <laughs> just, just wait. I, I have something under my hat. I'm planning on doing a law enforcement documentary, um, looking into doing that for, we have a couple other projects before that, like my current project I'm working on, but then I am actually looking into doing a film, uh, a, a documentary about behind the scenes with police officers. Now, do I look shocked? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shocked, uh, but let's go to what you just said. I have a film coming out right now. That's yes. this Saturday. That's the film you're talking about. This Saturday. Yes, yes. Uh, and you're actually going to be able to go into a theater? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I did a so We actually went into a theater and did a showcase of all of our films last year in October. We went to the same theater, which was the Galaxy Theater. We had to wear masks. We did a red carpet with mask on. You see us with mask and our awards and our team. And, you know, everybody had to be COVID safe and there was social distancing and even the theater couldn't be full. You know, they, they have a limit on the number of people that can right. be in large theaters. You know, you get like 50 people in a 200, th- you know, person theater. So, but it, it gives you that comfort to know that uh, you're protected during COVID. You know, we don't want anybody to get sick to come out and enjoy our films. So I'm very thankful for the way that the Galaxy, which is where we're going, the Galaxy Theater at the Boulevard Mall has set it up. And they actually have a program. I work, uh, Dell Weston facilitates and helps uh, local filmmakers to be able to show their films at the Galaxy. And we get a red carpet you know, they bring out the galaxy banner, we get a red carpet, you know, we're able to take pictures with our, our cast and crew. We're able to do show the film and then do Q and A afterwards. So it's just like the feeling of being at a film festival. You can create your own film co- showcase as long as you have films to show. Yeah. And you do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> just so happens you do. Oh yeah. Dale Weston as uh, my brother in Christ. And I've learned to, um, meet with his family and his kids and learn more about him. And it's exciting when you talk to somebody that's just come over to really understanding who the king is. Yes. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, yes. Let's talk about this. So that's this Saturday. How long yes. is that? It's a feature film. It's a feature film. It's actually not a feature film. Um, it that the, the press releases are all over the places because most of them are coming out of India, <laughs> because the story India. that we're India, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the story that we're telling is about a a pastor from India 
And she actually, she met me last year at my church, the International Church in Las Vegas, during our prophetic conference. And everyone was telling her, because she was saying, you know, I, she was telling her story. People said, your story should be made into a movie. You know who you need to meet. You need to meet Tamia, right? So at the last day of the conference last year, she met me. She came and they finally connected her with me. And I talk about the, the, the story of us meeting on my YouTube, which is Tamia Dow TV online. On the YouTube, I talk about meeting Pastor Anu. She came to the U.S. with all of these stops that she wanted to go see. And the first one that she met me at was in Vegas at this conference. She met me. I told her her story sounded amazing. We could talk more about it later. Yet she was stranded here having to get a connection from Vegas to have someone host her in LA before she went on to Houston. So it was like a five day layover because the person who was supposed to host her actually got stuck in Africa. So didn't return oh. back. So she's sitting across the table to me and you know how we are, Susan, we don't always get the connection that God, you know, <laughs> really. Oh, I always do. Oh, I never miss a beat. Are you kidding? <laughs> I've so taken I'm, a lot of U-turns. Uh, that's how you get her. Go ahead, please. Huh. So I, I'm looking across the table at her and she's telling me her story and I'm just kind of going, oh yeah, that's pretty sad. you know. <laughs> and then let me tell you how you come into this, Susan. So then I click and I go, wait a minute. Didn't I meet a whole bunch of people in LA when Susan invited me to the media fellowship in Los Angeles and Beverly Hills last year, the year before that, right? Right. And I said, wait a second, let me start going down my list. So I literally did of the people that I met there that I knew were in LA, the pastors, and I'm just texting them and saying, have this Indian pastor, here's the scenario, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Well, the doors opened, right? And I, I said to her, leave it with me, I'll figure it out, right? Because she was, you know, I don't want her to worry, this kind of thing. And we did, we figured it out. One of our local um, media fellowship friends, Clegg Seth, he set up a connection with um, Pastor Clayton in LA and the rest is history. She spent four days with, with Pastor Clayton ministering to uh, inner city uh, youth and men. And this oh, yeah. wasn't even what her plan was, right? <laughs> <laughs> and don't tell God your plan, that's for it, sure. Exactly, exactly. So she was blessed. She went there. She spent some time with our media fellowship people. And then she said to me, you know, will you make my movie? I said, let's talk, blah, 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 blah. I was supposed to go to India in August, but guess what happened? COVID, right? August? August, <laughs> August of last year. Oh. No, no, what happened? August of last year was when she wanted me to come. Oh, okay. Thank you. COVID happened in March, right? right. So March nothing 17th. was, oh. right. So nothing was open, right? So I wasn't able to go to her. So she came to me in November of last year. She physically came to Vegas, which gave me the interesting challenge of creating India in Las Vegas. So we got a hold of the Indian community. And since it's COVID right now, a lot of people weren't um, comfortable opening their homes. So we had to, to borrow stuff to recreate a set and do it. And it was fun. We had a great time. So many people, you know, volunteered their time, their effort, their energy to decorate, to, to help, you know, with us making sure we got the, the film very authentic. And we have. So those are the people that we are going to be celebrating with and thanking on Saturday for all of the time yes. and effort and energy that they put in to help us create yeah. our movie, which is called A Rising Eagle. Actually, that means more to me now that you shared the story, because one of the reasons that I got a calling and took an exit from Wheel of Fortune, I uh, broke in Vanna White, was because I'd gone to India. And I was, as I said on the Oprah show, I was so dirty. I was so hungry. I was so happy. <laughs> Wow. And that's wow. what India did for me. And so when I came back, I wouldn't have the nerve to leave that kind of money. And we were going nighttime. And the Lord allowed it. He allowed it. My contract was coming up. But the reason I go and share that is because it was India. I know it's timing also. I know the Lord has his hand on us when we move. But I just was so happy being so dirty and working so hard and not having a lot of food. As I recall, I lost good weight at that time. What a terrible way. But when, when we closed in and you had your friend here, Stephen was here at the beginning of the show. In case you yes. Know, um, 
But I looked at the background. I thought, oh, that reminds me of India. That's what I. That's why I asked him. I said, Stephen, give me an Indian background, and that's what he gave me. <laughs> yeah. So, how long is this film? We have. So we're still actually in 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 post production. We're still actually adding footage, making our decision. Our goal is to try to make it a feature, and uh-huh. we do have enough footage to do that. So what we are going to be showing on Saturday is a teaser so mm-hmm. that all of those people who put all their energy and effort into the into the film will be able to actually watch this on a big screen. And we also are celebrating Pastor Anu because she is now going to be returning back to to India to to be with her church because she uh her she she has a church in New Delhi called House of Prayer and she's been gone for 3 months, you know, leaving with associate pastors and stuff, uh-huh. doing the training and all of that. So she could be here to work on the film. Is um, it's the house of prayer. That's the same house of prayer they have in Jerusalem. That is a good question. I can't say yes or no. I don't know that Actually, answer. <laughs> house of prayer is Kansas City. I, they have so house I, of prayer even in Henderson. Be, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I don't know that they're connected. I guess that's sort of like when I see Chabad, you know, and if I see, you know, they're usually connected. That's why I was asking. Right. So, so you won't. So I see what you're doing on Saturday night. OK, I got that. I mean, uh, that's going to be lovely. What time does that start? We have our red carpet at seven o'clock and everybody's welcome to come and see the red carpet and take pictures. You're going to see a lot of beautiful uh, saris. I'm going to have a sari on. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they really bless me with a lot of really cool wardrobes. I actually am in the film. Uh, you know, what is interesting is we had to cast Indian looking people because we didn't have a lot of actors database to work with here in Vegas. And so we, we just got people who were of a lighter complexion from many different different backgrounds, you know, and you'll see in the movie that it worked. It, it really works because just like America is kind of a hodgepodge of people that are here. It's the same I, thing in I India. Know, kind of. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> well, people come from everywhere, you know, we, so you did. We right. Did. <laughs> and they and they assimilate, you know, they'll wear the clothing of the culture and behave like the culture. So so you'll see it. And it works. It really does work that we have a, a very diverse cast that was willing to as soon as I put out the call for it, they were willing to show up and be a part of it. And they truly believed in the importance of telling Pastor Anu's story because she went through so many obstacles. You know, she was born like the third child in an Indian family or the third female child. Female. And there's, yes, there's female. Mm-hmm. The third female child, which is very expensive. So she was like unwanted from birth and she starts from there and goes on to tell the story. So, yeah, it's a, it starts off. It's a it's a perfect art for a story. You know, you have this child that's born, you know, they're innocent. Children are innocent. And then life itself, you know, deals her all these kind of things. She's very optimistic for her future, but it doesn't necessarily unfold like that. Yet she continues to to walk the path because God had something for her, right? God had his hand on her all the way through, even when she was going to witch doctors and worshiping idols and doing all this kind of stuff, God was watching over her because she wanted to take her life twice and he wouldn't let it happen. He made sure that she was not able to. Right. So now here we have her many years later and she has she went on. She started going to she found the Lord. She started going to church. She grew up in the church. She grew to leadership. And then now she's actually leading a church. She's a female pastor in a country that has less than one percent of Christians. And for the most part, women are very rarely in a pulpit. So look fact, at all the things that she accomplished. <laughs> just just an add on to that. Women don't normally in the older, younger, what am I trying to say? I say the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, women weren't even kept when they were born. The girls weren't kept uh, in India. I, I didn't want to mention that, but yeah, I, I we were trying to get that across by saying that she was the, the she was born a burden is what we called it. We said she was born a burden to the family as the third girl child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's accomplished a lot, but so have you, because uh, we don't have too many people that I, I believe are, uh, I saw those great pictures on Facebook of you. Oh, uh, thank you. I don't do Facebook. I'm not very techie, but I did see it. Cute, cute, cute. Uh, the U.S. Army veteran, mm-hmm. author of the book, of director, producer of the film? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, and I mentioned to you that this is this is some Black History Month, and that you had said, and there's a lot of things here which which give you favor, God's favor, that you were named on certain days. You had certain um, things bestowed upon you. Yes, yes. They, yeah. When I retired from the police department on February the 1st, so the first day of Black History Month in 2012, February the 1st, the governor of the state of Nevada at the time was Brian Sandoval, and he made a proclamation that named February 1st to me a Dow Day in the state of Nevada. That's sweet. That's yes. sweet. Uh, did you tell him he, she put Jesus on that too? You know <laughs> what? We have a new governor. We could speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll claim a Jesus day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you were senior chaplain when you, uh, your senior chaplain. No, that was when I retired from the police department. I wasn't on the chaplaincy. Oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't join the okay. chaplaincy till after I retired and traveled the world. So I graduated in 2012. I joined the chaplaincy in 2014. But in between that time, I actually literally traveled the world. I, I uh, went to visit a lot of my police friends all around the world. You oh. know, I stayed in Germany. I stayed, I just stayed in people's homes. I loved it. It was, it was a beautiful oh, yeah. experience. Yeah. Well, you, not only do you learn more, but, you know, you're more apt to see what they like about their community yes their country uh what is the name of that place in germany that celebrate christians every 25 years oh but yeah and every 25 years because they honor christians and so this little village gives a. and that was one of the things i had on my list of things to do my goal list you know passion play i'm sorry passion play Passion Play is the name of it. I don't know if you've heard of it, have you? I haven't, no. I, I went to a lot of places in Germany, but I don't remember that. Well, there's I, a lot more than that. Uh, I, have, I have a cute yeah. little story. So when I travel, I always go and visit the churches. And uh -huh. it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Christian church. I'll go to a cathedral or, you know, I always want to go see the churches, right? A lot so of cathedrals. <laughs> Oh, because that's Europe. Europe is, you know, I that's spent right. a lot of my time going around Europe. And so I went to Dublin, Ireland. Oh my. And I asked when their service was and this kind of thing. And I came and I went to their service. I was the only person who looked like me in the service. Right. And but I, I'm so comfortable with that. I've I am so comfortable and so blessed by the Lord that I don't feel uncomfortable. I don't care where I go. I could look like none of no one there, but I'm still comfortable in me. So I have a good time. Right. It's an amen. Amen. Come on. Not come either. on. You know, so I went and I sat down in the church and the and the preach, the priest spoke and this and this. And then we got done and there was a little bit of a fellowship afterwards. And the person walked up to me, two ladies walked up to me and they said, hello, Helen, it's so good to see you. We haven't seen you in so long. And I just kind of looked at him and I said, you haven't seen me ever. <laughs> this is my first time being here. <laughs> But I just got so touched because I'm often told by people that they, when they see me, they feel like they know me. They feel very comfortable with me, even though they've never met me. So I know that's the Holy Spirit. I know that that is the spirit within me that gives people comfort to know that, hey, I can trust this woman. She's, she feels familiar to me, you know, and it's a blessing. I truly, I truly thank God for that. Well, I, there's no doubt in my mind that when the Holy Spirit's living in you, everybody's going to warm up to you, even the enemy that trembles. Come know. on now. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that you've done. Wh when did you go from directing to producing? And how? It all uh, came who to, produces it? You <laughs> raise money? Wow. Yes. Wow, wow. Yes. Yes. Uh, the producers are the ones that put the money into the film. Yes. So I, I uh, introduced you earlier to Stephen. Stephen and I has been um, we've been partnered on uh, well, like the 11 films. Literally, we've been partners since Feb. Um, I can't think of the month. June. Since June of 2018, he and I have been partnered together. He actually met me on the set of a film that he or of a show that a talk show that he produced. He was behind the camera. I was being interviewed by uh, Ninon of Vegas Live with Ninon. And he was listening to me talking about the film I had just done, which was the first film, Turn Back Time. And as soon as I got done, he and his co-producer that were on the show were handing me their business card going, you got another one you got anything else coming up you know because <laughs> he wanted to put his feet in he said i want to i want to do some filmmaking i'd love to you know if you have something coming up i'd love to work with you and then like the rest is history you know here we are in 2001 and he and i have made uh 10 or 11 films together you know we're getting ready to complete the 11th one it's the the one that we're doing right now 
When when do they do your story? You know what? That is such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one who's who has asked it either. Uh, yeah, it'll be soon. And I'll tell you why I thought about that. And, it, and it's not to say it because the Lord put it in my heart and in my spirit. So I spoke to you about to, uh, February 1st being to me a Dow day and it's Black History Month, you know, and and you guys can see that I am black. <laughs> Hashtag, oh, hey. I was hashtag, yeah, I am do? black history. <laughs> it's on your bio, so I mentioned it. <laughs> but it's funny. I, so um, they were talking about like the different channels that talk about how they're going to feature these uh, black figures in the community and this and that and the other. As, and people were saying to me, Tamia, when are they going to feature you? Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that going from an army veteran being, a, you know, in the United States Army, serving your country, being in the police department in Las Vegas, being a chaplain, being an international speaker, then going on to direct and produce. I think there's a story there somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> You yes, I, I agree. I agree. It'll be in our timing. You know, uh, we have we had put together. It's not done yet. We had filmed a documentary where I got together with two other female fic filmmakers, directors, and we put together a film where we kind of talked about how our, we, we call it our second act because we all had, future, you know, careers in various different areas in the world. And now we filmmaking. We're all um, focused right now on filmmaking. So we say it's called Take to their second act for three of us. And uh, it's um, Julie Brasino Garcia, who is an actress. You actually see her on commercials all the time. <laughs> and then it's uh, Brenda Daly and myself. And we have three diverse backgrounds. Uh, Julie came from the flight industry. She was a flight attendant. And Brenda came from the service industry. She was a bartender. And then, of course, I come from the police service and veteran industry. And now I'm a filmmaker. You've accomplished a lot. You truly Thank have. you. Reminds you of the Charlie's Angels, except it's now <laughs> and not then. Uh, you know, really. Uh, and uh, would you share, because you're so well-versed with this, um, Chaplain Dow, if you'd help me here, with the chaplain's training, going back to what you said earlier, then we'll move on, in the Chaplaincy Academy Teaching Leadership. Yes. They can go on their website and look this over, right? I'm just alluding to it, because there are people that really do want to know, so please. Yeah, that's uh, they can go to Chaplaincy Nevada, spell out Nevada.org. We hold an academy twice a year, a training academy twice a year. It's generally in April and October. And I believe they said that the April class is already open because last year we weren't able to do the April class due to COVID. Yet you learn so much and you learn about resources because uh, chaplains are resources. For example, I in particular, there's various different ones that you can, uh, different um, things that you can volunteer with. Like, for example, I told you I'm doing the, the big search, you know, I, I volunteer yeah, I, and do that. And then there's the recap. So that's uh, reclaiming every, or rebuilding every city around peace. And we are the ones when you see on TV, the chaplains with the black shirts that are out on crime scenes. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say crime scenes, it's aftermath. You know, we're not like <laughs> out there with the detectives, you know although we can be called out for that to help with trauma issues. So we provide spiritual care. So I'm part of that because of course I'm back. That has me back working with uh, my, my old partners, you know, yeah. on the police department. Yeah. Yes. So I really enjoy that. But there's other things that you can do. You can volunteer in, in hospitals and volunteer with various other different places. You could work like I'm in charge of the uh, book committee. We have put out three books in chaplaincy and are working on our fourth one right now. So you could write your testimony and, and share that to encourage people. Uh, we, I'm trying to think of, we do domestic violence. I do domestic violence training. Oh. Uh, Chaplain Barry does the human trafficking uh, awareness training. And um, there's just so much. Go to the website, look at it. You mm -hmm. get the training while you're in the academy and then you can choose where you want to serve. And there is a requirement that you stay in service. You have to be, like even right now, you know, whether it's phone calls or Zoom meetings or however you're helping to spiritually care for people or whether you're actually actually using, uh, working as a chaplain to support your church, you have to be active because this is, you don't just get a title. It's not like a, cer 
certificate. Some people grab certificates and then move on to the next one, right? This is about being actively in the service of the Lord, using your title as chaplain to be a blessing to people who are around you. And when you stop and think that our Lord didn't have any title at all, ever. So um, I was, I'm going to, uh, two things here going on. One is, I um, just want to mention that Chaplain Dow received the Susan B. Anthony Leadership Award. Uh, it's nothing to scoff at, is it? Uh, <laughs> That was in Canada, Toronto. We you shot a whole bunch you, of show. You helped me get there. <laughs> oh, oh you, yeah, yeah. You helped me get there. Yes, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank uh, you. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But I think rather than try to rush the last two and a half minutes that I have here with you, I'd like to ask you if you would do a second show in a few weeks with me. And we'll go and we'll talk about India because I lived there and I worked there with Surgeon General, former Surgeon General Coop. And you have so much experience. It might be fun to share that with with everybody listening, you know. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, I definitely would come back. I would love that. Yeah, I think because we haven't touched it. Uh, I mean, I'm trying not to push and go through everything. But frankly, uh, there's just a lot here and it's fun. You're yes, fun, it is fun. You yeah. Know? <laughs> So if I enjoy myself, why don't I do it more? Yeah. Well, I <laughs> tell you so- what, God has really, really very much blessed me. You know, I, I always tell people the story of the parable of the talents right. where people, one gets one, one gets two, one gets five. I truly believe that I got five and I'm trying to stay, make sure I get them all because <laughs> I want the Lord to come back to tell me well done. Right. I don't want to think I wasted anything, you know. <laughs> well, I don't think you have to be worried about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's kind of in the bag, never taking him for granted. But I would say, as my father used to say, just look at the record. Amen. Look Amen. At the record, you know, so I want to thank you. I'll say a little prayer as we close here until you come back. Yes. Thank Lord, you. Thank and I you. will be back. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're not going anywhere. And when we do, we know we come into your arms. And we thank you that you receive us because we know that you're king of kings, Lord Mm. of lords. You're our everything. There's nothing that we need that you don't have. Yes, Lord. And there's no way we can live at all without knowing that you are our everything, that the Holy Spirit lives here, and that life is short, and we do want eternity with you. We're going to occupy this space here. We're going to come home to you there. And see, as you have promised, our loved ones, that's the word of God. Amen. And so I thank you for this time with Pamela Tao. I really, Dow, thank you. I really thank you. I sincerely thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless your family. Bless your breathing. Bless your thoughts. Thank Bless you. your footsteps. And thank you, Lord God, for protecting us from ourselves. Mm. We pray it in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want to thank the Lord also for my producer, because he is amazing. And I am literally sitting in the studio right now. (laughs) So I just send blessings to him and his household. Lord God, we thank you for him and his business and his willingness to support me making faith-based films. So (laughs) thank you, Stephen Sebo. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, thank you. I look forward to talking to you again. If you need me, give a call. Yes, thank you, Susan. I love you. I love you. Bye-bye.